This is a clinical practice video from NAON, the National Association of Orthopedic Nurses, presenting the topic of neurovascular assessment of the lower extremity in the orthopedic patient. The neurovascular assessment is an evaluation of the neurologic and circulatory status of a limb. It is foundational to orthopedic nursing practice. This assessment takes time to learn but is critical to quality patient outcomes. The failure to perform an adequate neurovascular assessment can result in devastating injuries caused by delay in recognizing a complication. The nurse assesses for changes in circulation, oxygenation, and nerve function in an extremity that is casted, immobilized, or at risk due to an injury or surgery. Neurovascular compromise in the lower extremity could be related to compartment syndrome, a serious complication. Patients with spine injury or spine surgery are also at risk for serious complications from neurovascular compromise due to bleeding or swelling that could injure the spinal cord. Neurovascular assessments are performed to ensure the patient has circulation, sensation, and movement of both extremities. This guides critical thinking and the plan of care. When doing this assessment, compare the affected extremity with the unaffected when possible. Ongoing assessments are compared with previous ones as well as side to side each time. This way, you can quickly recognize a deficit or abnormality and report it. The frequency of follow-up assessments is based on assessment findings, physician orders, and or institutional policies. All assessments should be documented, which will assist with trending and communication between providers. The neurovascular assessment has seven components. There is no specific order to the components, but we recommend that in your practice you do them in the same order each time, so nothing is missed. Pain. Assess the patient's level of pain using an appropriate pain scale. Ask the patient to describe the pain. Ask the location and characteristics of the pain. Extreme pain out of proportion to the injury, especially with passive motion, is a very significant sign of a possible neurovascular deficiency. If the patient is intubated, unconscious, or otherwise unable to communicate pain, the assessment will rely more heavily on the other components. Pulses. Palpate peripheral pulses to assess blood flow to the legs. Feel the pulse by applying easy pressure using the pad of the index finger and middle fingers. If the patient is post-surgical or post-injury, check the pulses on the unaffected side first, then the affected side, and compare. Assess presence, rate, equality, regularity, and strength. The dorsalis pedis pulse is located on the mid-dorsum of the foot, aligned with the second and third digits. This pulse is anatomically absent in about 10% of the population. If this is the case, it should be communicated in every routine patient handoff. The posterior tibial pulse is found by locating the medial malleolus at the inside ankle area. Approximately one inch below and behind the medial malleolus, you will find the posterior tibial pulse. The artery here is deeper than the dorsalis pedis and needs concentration to feel the pulse. Pulse strength is typically documented on a 0 to 4 scale, where 0 means no palpable pulse, 2 plus is palpable, and 4 plus is bounding. If a pulse is difficult to locate, it is recommended to mark the site with indelible pen, which aids in follow-up assessments. If a pulse is not palpable with the fingers or is difficult to obtain, a Doppler should be used. A decrease in the strength of the pulse or loss of the pulse is a critical finding and should be communicated immediately to the physician. The nurse would also assess the next, more proximal pulse, such as the popliteal or femoral pulse, and communicate this also. Capillary refill. To evaluate capillary refill, pressure is applied to the nail bed for about two to three seconds until it blanches. The pressure is then released and the nail bed observed for the amount of time it takes to regain color. Normal refill time is three seconds or less. Slow cap refills or greater than three seconds can indicate delayed circulation. Sensation and motor function. 
To assess sensation, first, ask the patient if he or she feels any altered sensation on the affected limb, such as numbness, tingling, or pins and needles. If present, it is important to determine the specific location. These signs indicate neurologic compression and could mean increasing pressure in the compartment or spinal compression. If these are new findings, they should be reported to the physician. Remember, too, that if the patient received a nerve block or epidural in surgery, there could be loss of sensation and or motor function that is expected. After getting the patient's perception, you will do a sensory assessment. Ask the patient to close the eyes. Using touch, assess sensation in the dorsum and medial areas of the foot, as well as the tips of the toes. Move the hand up each leg to determine if the patient is able to feel your touch. Motor function is tested with the patient's eyes open. Ask the patient to wiggle toes and then to plantar flex and dorsiflex each foot while you provide resistance with your hand. Plantar flexion is directed by innervation at the spinal cord level at S1. The inability to perform plantar flexion must be reported immediately. Dorsiflexion of the great toe is directed by innervation at L5. A patient who is unable to do this is experiencing a neurologic deficit that could potentially lead to foot drop. This should be reported immediately. Overall, any decrease or loss of sensation, weakness, or muscle spasms should be reported to the physician. Observe the color of the limb in comparison with the other side, noting any difference in appearance. Color changes in patients with dark skin can be more difficult to detect. Pale or blanched appearance of the skin, coolness to touch, and a slow or absent capillary refill may indicate arterial insufficiency. Blue, cyanotic, or mottled discoloration, engorgement, and warmth to the touch may indicate poor venous return. Temperature. Feel each extremity to determine if it is warm, hot, cool, or cold. Compare one to the other. Edema. Inspect the toes, foot, and leg for swelling and compare the two sides. Note if there is an increase since the last assessment. Monitor for any changes. Some facilities measure leg or thigh circumference and mark the area where the tape measure is placed as a baseline. Note if there is pitting edema. Swelling could mean poor venous return. Tightness of the compartment could be detected by the patient and may also be palpable by the nurse. If there are changes in the assessment, this needs to be communicated to the physician. If the patient assessment leads the nurse to suspect compartment syndrome, in addition to urgent physician notification, the patient's leg must be lowered to the level of the heart. All changes in neurovascular integrity, as well as pain status, should be assessed at regular intervals and changes reported to the physician. Each neurovascular assessment is documented in the medical record. This allows for evaluation of trending patterns of declining or improving patient status. In addition, all physician notifications and nursing interventions must also be documented. Through assessments, provider communication and documentation can prevent or detect potential complications at the earliest possible moment. The neurovascular assessment is key to providing quality orthopedic patient care. Thank you for taking time to learn more about this important assessment. NAON would like to extend their appreciation to the TriStar Southern Hills Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee for the use of their facility to film this video and to the nurses for their assistance.